Hello, everyone. My name is Erasmus, and I am the host for the Shaft podcast. Um, today, we are very, very excited to bring you this episode. Um, we're going to have a very, very interesting conversation, a super conversation with um, one of my longtime friends, um, someone who is my mentor, and therefore I'm very, very excited about this conversation. Um, before we start, I just want to say thank you all so much for the wonderful support that you've shown to the channel and you've shown to this initiative. Um, Andy and I are always happy to record um, these interviews and then to bring them to you. We've also been working very hard to brainstorm ideas, ways to make this very interesting and provide value to you. But obviously we are shut off from the world. So um, as much as possible, when we get feedback from you as to how you think the episodes are going, the new ideas, the guests you like to see, we're very happy to do that. So we'll be rolling out um, pieces of content to hear your thoughts and your opinions, but all this thing, making known within uh, the chat space too, under um, all of our videos. Um, we're very happy to take them and implement them. Um, welcome back to the show. And today we want to have a super conversation um, with a man um, everyone knows as African chairman. This is a personal friend of mine, and he's a hero within the debate space. He's also an alumni of the Presbyterian Boys um, Secondary School. He's uh, the African champion of debate. He's seen as one of the uh, core members, core founding fathers of the KNST Debate Society, of which we will get to talk about um, um, a lot later. But my, my words will limit me if I, I want to express who he is because he's um, different uh, things to a lot of different people who know him within their own personal spaces and anytime those spaces interact everyone just uh, mentions uh, um, how strong of a character he is so i'll leave him to introduce himself in the way in which um he likes to be introduced to the whole world let us invite um mr boachen yamiche isaac welcome bni hi <laughs> I'm I mean, I don't know what time people will be watching the interview. So, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Uh, I mean, you you basically said a lot of things. I've hardly had a chance to introduce myself wherever I go, so I usually do not introduce myself. So, I I prefer to talk about you. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 great to be on your plat on your platform. I mean, when when I saw the initial advertisements for a podcast idea, I mean, I love it. If you speak to the boys on Conglo, the lazy boys of Conglo, they've been wanting to start a podcast for the last four years. But of course, great minds do nothing because you talk about the ideas and not implement anything. So shout out to Karim and Eric and Co, who have had podcast equipment for years but have still not put out any content. And I like what you're doing also because, uh, so I think one of my, I think when, when Chappelle was being awarded the Mark Twain Prize for American Humor, one of the stories he told was uh, the story of a grill, like in Africa, and um, we had a historical like person called a grill in Af some African communities. So like the grill was like, you know, the person who knew all the stories of the community. He knew the history. So when, like, there's a grill, he trains children up who would one day grow up to take the place of the grill. So it's often said that when a grill dies, it's like burning down an entire library. Mm -hmm. And that's how powerful stories are. Because it's stories that bring people together. Stories give people meaning in everything they do. So any platform that gets people to tell stories, to let people know what has been before and where people are, is a good platform. And so it's not easy. And I appreciate the consistency with which you and Andrews are going about it. I'll just advise you about putting all your pictures on your YouTube because <laughs> that's may not be particularly the most thing we want to see about you guys but yeah <laughs> shout out yeah. to the thank you thank you very much it really means a lot also coming from you 
not not just like as one of the giants in debates and, and therefore like getting your opinion on um, something happening within debates, but also someone who has known us for a very long time. And it's particularly interesting that your very first words and the opportunity you get, um, you shade Congo. So uh, <laughs> would would have a lot of opportunity and you'd be hearing some of these guys' names just as we heard within the first web episode. And I'll give you a chance to define Congo uh, by yourself to a lot of other people and, and also deal with uh, the stories around it because it was uh, what do you say the citadel of, of of our time but but thank you very much we just hope that this this platform would continue to to be a voice for for everyone but i think it was already leads me to some very very interesting questions that um um i want to um ask you when you think about your story within debates when you think about your story within debate would you say you are satisfied and i know it has not ended in any way if i know you i know it has not ended but would you say you are satisfied with how it went because knowing your quality i know there was almost nothing that you couldn't do for me i always say that you are my goods there was almost nothing you couldn't do but how would you personally assess your career especially within debates yeah i mean I, I I think one problem my most famous uh, social media posts is talking about why I love debates, you know, and why, how I came into debates, you know, probably I'll tell the story again. So I, I went with a friend who had just come from the US to watch a play at a, an international school, I didn't mention the name, and it was, I loved the drama and everything, and I, it took me back to when you know I was in primary school and uh, there was a play. At that time, I was probably the best student in the class anyway, and so you know how these things were. Yeah. But they still didn't have a role for me, and so there was somebody who was supposed to play the. It was a Jesus play, so someone was supposed to play the role of King Herod's footstool, and the person didn't come to school that day for rehearsal, and this was like two days to the play. And so they gave me the chance to play the role of the King Herald Switch. And it was a major character whose holy role was to sit down and, you know, <laughs> sit in front of the king. Because I was smallish, and that was the only thing I was qualified for. I wasn't a great footballer. I remember that my only football accomplishment in school was in class three. We had room one versus room two. And so our girls had lost the ampy competition. And the football game was a tie between the, yeah. you know, the football game between the guys. And there was this confusion. And so I was just, you know, I missed the confusion. I just took the ball and hit it and it entered their pool. And I started shouting goal. So everybody accepted it as the legal goal in the game. So I was a soccer hero in that situation. But everybody knew I wasn't talented. I don't even know how I found my way to the game. <laughs> and, and so a lot of things, you know, mm. aside from probably being the best student in the class, I don't really remember anything that I could be called being great at. So it was in class six when it was speech day. We were preparing for our anniversary and then, you know, they put together a debate and I was selected as one of the people who debate because that one they pick like the top three or you know students in each class and then they put them up to the debate. They wrote the scripts for us and all those things. But that was actually my first official debate. But it made me love this opportunity to speak because as for speaking, I had been speaking from time to time, you know, and even in my early days, because of self-deprecation, whenever I had the opportunity to speak. A lot of people found the things I said humorous. I remember in church, I was to do my first, you know, like poetry recital in church. And before the recital, I told the MC that I was nervous. And so when he called me, he told the, uh, uh, the congregation that, yeah, the next Isaac Bache, he says he's nervous. So I took the <laughs> microphone and I said, just as the MC said, and I said it in Chi, meaning like, I'm nervous. Everybody started laughing. But I put everybody at ease and I did the recital. 
So going to secondary school, I I was on I, I joined the debate club. And at the time when I joined the debate club, I remember my first debate club meeting. There were a lot of great guys. I mean Kakari, who we later met in the university of he was in the University of Ghana when we met in the university. Kuntu Blank saying, like great guys, these were my mates, right? Mm -hmm. And we met seniors who were wonderful speakers. Like these guys were amazing. You know, you would read their scripts from previous debates and you're like, wow. And my goal was always to be a speaker, a main speaker for the debate team. But it was, there was no way I was going to be a main speaker as a form one boy. So I, I chose to do something that I've done wherever I've been. That is, I, I, I chose the smallest role available. So I, I volunteered to be a researcher for the team. My mates wanted to be speakers for the team. I volunteered to be a researcher for the team. And there was no space for speakers. So when I said research, I was like, okay, cool. So when they have debates, I'll go to the internet cafe, go do some research, bring it to them. So from one third term, uh, there's a debate and the the seniors have an exam or mock or something and so you know they can't do it and there's a form two squad who is ahead of us and one person is willing to do it and he says you know what you guys should give isaac a chance to represent us that was it and so i became supporting speaker for the team and after that i won there was an, an inter house debate competition and I didn't particularly appreciate the manual labor in secondary school. And so <laughs> any chance to get out of manual labor would be appreciated. And the debate was happening after school. So by the time you get back to the house, all the manual labor is over. So yeah. I, that's, well, well, that's also one reason why I took the inter-house debate competition seriously. And so we got to the final and we won. I think at that time my teammates were Patrick Boyo. Do you know Boyo is a rapper? Really? I think, I think I've heard it before. He don't mentor yeah. one of those shows. Yeah, Boyo, Boyo is a rapper. He was my teammate. And so we won. So I remember when I got to the house, everywhere was quiet. I was like, ah, where are these guys? Apparently they were in hiding. So everybody came out, they were carried it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I knew I wouldn't be doing house chores for a long time. But yeah, the next day the house captain made me do house chores. <laughs> That's so, <laughs> and then I got to the university and we'll talk about the stories, I mean, all that. But if you look at why I came into debate, it was not really to carry trophies or, you know, like it was really about expression. It was all about a platform. It was all about something that I could do and, you know, like feel free. And so that's what debate did for me. And, when I look at my career, I mean, I won a lot of things. I had a lot of experiences, but my real joy came from being on the platform. Recently, I attended a, a tournament because me, I, I still attend tournaments. Yeah. I do the prelims and then I, I, I leave the breaks. I mean, now when I go, the kids don't even want me to win anything again. So. <laughs> but it's all because I really just like speaking. I really enjoy speaking in debate and the kind of things it makes me, you know, think about and the opportunities to speak to other people, see different generations of speakers. So when it comes to my career as a speaker, I I appreciate it very much where I got to. I, I really believe I could have also done better, like uh, maybe as we talk, like I believe there's a significant moment in my career that I missed that if I had had, it's like, you know, basketball, you know, if, if you are not playing basketball from around age 14 or 13 to age 18, there's nothing they can do to you after that age that can make you a great basketball player. So, you know, there, there is a moment in every sportsman's growth cycle that if you miss, it will take part of your growth away, you get it. And so all those things impacted, but I always also saw my, you know, journey as a debater as being more than a speaker. And so I always was interested in 
how can we sustain this platform for the future generations to take over? How can we provide more opportunities for people to speak? That is why if you look through my career, you find moments of sponsoring people to go for tournaments, who are in high school to go for university tournaments, all those things. It's really because I believed in the platform and the power it had to change lives. Encouraging people who have been out of the sport to come back into it, finding ways to just make sure that people find this platform that I found and make use of it. Because for a lot of people, they may still be Herald's foot too, but there's more to life than if you put yourself out there. And debate gave me that platform to really do that. And everywhere I've gone, everything I've done, you can extract 90% of it from the things I learned from debate. You get. So I believe that I had a great career. I still have a great career that <laughs> I'm not adding trophies to, but I'm still, you know, engaging a lot in. And especially with the opportunity to work with speech forces, we have also moved into the administrative side and we want to see how we can grow in terms of debate. And so, yeah, I, yeah. I, I love that. I mean, there, there, there's, a, there's a lot to talk about in, in terms of the administrative growth in debate, which I think is one of the runs we, we usually used to have. I'm, I'm just mesmerized because um, I know for someone like Karim, he was able to have um, an almost successful football career third best after Suleiman Tari, but at least you managed to score a goal and <laughs> win something for somebody. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think what's very interesting for me about your story is, is identify, I identified three, three main stages for you, like the preparation, then the opportunity, and then you being able to deliver on these things. How did you come to know about these things? And the reason I'm driving at this is that has this always been the process for you in terms of um, finding success in, in, in the different ways in which you fi find it, whether in debates, whether outside of debates? Because um, since you didn't introduce yourself, you were also the school uh, prefect or SRC president in Presbyterian Boys Secondary School, SRC president in um, KNUST, which is a very, very big thing. And this is how people look at you and define you. Is, is this a principle you cons consistently duplicate? And what are some of the other principles you look out for in order to, to reach those levels? I mean, um, I'm not the same person I was just this morning. So we always grow and add up. But the values I pick along the way, I, I stick to them a lot of the time. So one thing about me is that uh, I've, I've always been ready to step in and step up. Mm. I remember my first leadership stint was actually a makeshift cardboard monitor. You know, my class three cardboard monitor is not around, so you get to share the books, you know. And then um, junior um, high school, I, I I decided to run for uh, school prefect, and then I won the election. But I didn't win the election because I campaigned the hardest, you know. I couldn't even campaign at the time because I, di I didn't get a concept of... At that time, my understanding of politics was, listen, people should vote for the best person. If you are the best person, why do you need to go out to tell people? So yeah. let them vote, let them vote. Then I was sitting in class studying some afternoon, and then I realized that my opponent supporter had brought some primary school kids and um, some like kids from the lower rank so yes you see that guy don't vote for him you see this guy he's the one we should vote for him. Ooh, all right no problem <laughs> but once again it was the things i had learned in the debates in primary school that i used to prepare my manifesto you know i i I, 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 I remember like going around doing the manifesto reading. We're going, you know, unlike having the assembly where you deliver one manifesto, we went to each class to deliver our speeches. It's crazy, you know, to so, like each class to deliver our speeches. Each like level has like three classes, you know, so we went to three, each class to deliver our speeches. That's like 52 states. <laughs> so because of debates, then I tell them that 
you should uh, vote for a man not because of his size but because of his character because i learned these things you know because of debate you know research and then you know i so i eventually win but then again I didn't put myself out there as the most gifted. I just like believed in hard work. When I was running for SLC president at the time, I had a lot going against me, you know. I had a lot going against me, like in terms of my political team. You know, I had worked with a political team in first year, and then I had worked with a different political team in second year, as in like you know, campus, do are no political traditions, but there are groups of people who you work with. Yeah. But the team I worked with in first year were not happy I worked with the team I worked with in second year. And the team I worked with in second year decided to do something else. So I was like a political orphan. But I I always told people, like my friends, Da Costa, Tintin and Co, that the election will be won by the one who talks the most and works the most. So that was my philosophy. Every morning when I wake up, I make sure that by the end of the day, I'll be the candidate who has spoken to the most people. I'll be the candidate who has worked the most. Because at that time, I believe that it's all about hard work. All the other things will fall in place. If you keep on working, if you keep on talking, you are going to excel one way or the other. And so when you look at it, some principles I've run through, like debate success. Um, the principle that got me in there is like the doorway, getting your leg in the doorway. So in life, there are things that you don't have to get your whole body through at once. Somebody's closing the door. The best way to do it is to get your, law in, your, your, your leg in the doorway. And then when you have that, you can force the rest of your body through. And so a lot of people, when they are looking for opportunities, they always think of the ready opportunities. They don't think of the fact that, listen, maybe I'm not going to get this thing at this time, but let me just put my leg in the doorway and then I'll be able to force the rest of my body through. So let me become a researcher. Then I can get to show my skill set. Then an opportunity might come by and then I'll force the rest of my body through. But remember, if you are putting your leg in the doorway, you must have solid boots on, else you'll be hurt. So a solid boots on is being prepared, actually, studying all the time, you know, to get yourself ready. When I joined the KST debate team, I, I participated in the inter uh, whole debate competition, all right? Now, I represented Queens at the time. My teammate was David Atapa. And I didn't know that there was a whole debate team, all right? So David Atakwa comes to me and says that, oh, Isaac, right? I'm like, yeah, He's like, I know you from secondary school. We, uh, v Volta River Authority 50th anniversary debate. It was Presec, Infanspim, and Co. And we won, I was best speaker. Mm -hmm. So that's where he saw me from. He was not even a member, like a member of the speaking team, but he saw me and then he made a recommendation. And so we trained for the Interhouse debate competition. I didn't win. I we actually got out in the semi-final, but people had identified that no, there's a gem there. Do you get it? There's a gem there that we have to go for. And so then I was, you know, recruited for the debate team. And there were finalists and champions, right? But after a few weeks of debating, because we put they put the team together because there was going to be a bilateral debate with University of Ghana. At that time, University of Ghana, they were represented by Joyce Oche, uh, Edde Magbana, Edmond Combat, and I think one other person who I, I can't remember. And so I was also, I was selected. So I spoke with Lenin and Ufoyan Ponsa also. No, no, not uh, Ufoyan Ponsa, Sak and then a guy, is it Harris or something? He traveled to China after second year. Yes, and so we represented and we won. My team, myself and Lenin, we won once again. So. It's these moments, right, that kept on putting me out there. And, but I wasn't having the success that I needed at the time, you know, like I was a semi-finalist in the Interhouse. We won the UG Inter, yeah, the UG Bilateral. But when we went for nationals, crashed out in the semis, you know, 
I was very devastated by that because I was thinking of all the times that, you know, like, why, why is that we never get to win, but, you know, semifinals, because the content is there, but it was, you know, it was a lot of losses. So that was the first time I gave up in debate. You know, I said, you know what, let me just take a break. So second, like second year, when we came back from GDC, I told the guys that, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking a break from there. Mm -hmm. You are done. And it's, 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 it's acts as a perfect segue into the next thing I wanted to discuss with you in terms of dealing with setbacks, because what people see from the outside is someone who is just taking advantage of the opportunities and is switching and just keeps ascending. Like from every position we see you, you're moving into something higher and it just seems you're on the up. But here you are speaking about these successes and in between them, there's talking about your, your uh, uh, dealing with loss, talking about your frustrations and everything. So how do you deal with setbacks in, in that journey? I mean, I the, the, there's really, it's very difficult to win without losing. It's very difficult to win without losing. And mostly people don't understand that it's easier to win when you've accepted that, you know, it doesn't matter. You know? And so even becoming a SRC president, is because I had lost college president in second year, all right? And when losing that, when it came to winning, like when it came to third year, I was not interested in management and you know, all the other political check boxes usually pe people want to like tick. I, I, I believe that I knew the lessons and the tricks and I could pull it together. So setbacks are very vital to your journey. And like you said, how you deal with it is what, you know, makes you a champion. And so sometimes you really just need to step back. Like, it's, it's a fact of life. And that's what people don't realize. In, in the rookie, I mean, one series that I love, you realize that a cop goes onto the scene, you know, he gets wounded. And some people want to deal with it by coming back immediately without taking time to reflect. When you do that, you're not going to learn the right lessons. And so you have to sometimes just admit that you need to take a back seat. You need to observe, you need to learn. That's one way to look at setback. Then when you come back, you don't focus on the losses you had. You focus on the right things that you did, you know, and then learn the right lessons in them. That is a way to, you know, look at all these things. and. You should also know this, that what you want, somebody else wants, right? Mm -hmm. And so you are going to meet a lot of people who may be just aggressive as you are, or maybe even more aggressive, all right? And they deserve it too. You are not the only winner, all right? Like other people deserve to win also. And so the fact that you don't win at one point in time does not mean the world should end for you people would win. And in some instances, they, you would have to be happy for them, all right? And so those are just things that I realized anytime I had setbacks. So it was easy to get back on your feet and get things working for you. And sometimes to, you have to find other things to be great at. <laughs> I mean, one, one thing that, you know, I, I was a strong Chelsea fan like you were, but now, you know, you don't even I, care. Yeah, it's, it's a lesson I learned that just you should follow multiple sports. <laughs> <laughs> Diversify your emotions. <laughs> unless, unless you decide to be a Manchester United fan. <laughs> black Stars. <laughs> you support of the Black Stars and you support of Los Angeles Clippers. <laughs> 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 then it means you will be losing in many, many, many ways. But I mean, so all those things help you deal with pain and disappointment. But getting to when I, you know, 
I, I, I took a, a break from the beat. So the PADC was going to be in December, and this break I took it around August. And November, I get a call, you know, yeah, someone's called. I picked the call. It's Duke. He said, Isaac, where are you? I'm like, oh, you know, I'm in hall seven. Say, yeah, I need to see you. So, okay, meet me at the car park. So I go downstairs, and Duke is like, you know, Probably gives a water, Sisulu, something, something. Yeah. And then says, yeah, I need you on the team for PADC. I know you said you've taken a break. And to be honest, I had missed the game. Because even during the break, I could pass through the trainings they used to do and then give a speech or two, you know, tell a friend here and there that mm, this thing, maybe this can be better, you know, all that. And but I told him that my only objection which is fair is that people have worked towards it and so i don't think people will be happy to you know see me just coming especially when it involves traveling and you know how traveling so he said no leave that for me you know i'm like okay cool so we go for training and then all these things but it looks like people are not the people were not happy with it and yeah i wouldn't I'll... say that's where my I didn't say that's where my woes began, but I would say <laughs> that's where my woes became clearer. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, let's 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 dive into this right because you you've gone to an important uh, a juicy part of the story that I was actually hoping we get to. I won't lie to you, but you speak of uh, when you speak of the beginning being courted by David Atakpa, whom you had met, like that's where the introduction started, and then you speak of you voluntarily taking time out but let's talk about the time when uh there were rumors or quote unquote what we came to hear was that you were kicked out what what was the series of developments or things that led to that moment and what specifically was was happening at that point for it to get to the level where you were kicked out of the debate society in kenya state Interesting. That's a very loaded, you know, question. Um, before that, I'll just like to say that from all everything I say is from my perspective. Even though I may know more things, I, I'll try and see things from my perspective, and uh, I'll also try and do as little naming and shaming as possible. But <laughs> you know, debate rivalries are regular, right? I mean, I was with you in Thailand, and Lee Kuan Yew. Uh, what's what's the name? Lee Chin. Lee Ching Wing or yeah, Lee Ching Wei, who on Worlds had been booted out as president of the Oxford Union. Yes, and, yes. and he picked up a novice and went to Worlds. I, I I share a lot of stories with him, like a, a connection with him in that light, you know. And um, only that was not president in anyway. But so yeah, so people were not happy with the Calabar thing, which is fair, which is fair, I mean. When you that. say the Calabar thing, you mean the PAUDC yeah, in the West Fact Fact Calabar, Fact. for which yes. we were selected and you taking the hiatus. Yes. Yeah. So when we returned, I mean, there was probably not much debate going on. So the only, the next debate we knew would be going on was uh, the, the um, Ghana Tertiary Debate Championship which at the time as we knew was the only national competition we had in Ghana for tertiary debating, you know. And at that time it was handled by a man called Hesse. Uh, uh, and it was a debate association that um, had, they, Hesse had been to a previous PAEDC. And so he came to Ghana and then mobilized schools. And, you know, he wanted Ghana, like Ghanaian students to be involved in debating. Um, and so, but the previous competition, the previous nationals that we attended, when my team was kicked out, you know, there were conflicts here and there as to how that could happen. And, you know, like they thought it wasn't fair. And so after the tournament, Hesse wrote a letter to the vice chancellor of the university, Ken vice chancellor, Professor Ellis, stating that he had banned KN University for violent conduct and all that. I mean, these were serious allegations. But 
there was not, you know, like conversations didn't happen between the debate society and then Hersey after that. So we are at home and then, you know, Jigsasu has just become SRS president. So we've begun the debate society's um, record of being winning as house presidency for a number of years, all right? And so, yeah. and then uh, David Atakpa and myself, David Atakpa and myself began, you know, we interacted. Like, what are we going to do about this um, GTDC coming up? Because if we don't do it, that means we wouldn't debate till the next PEDC. I mean, that's crazy, yeah. right? So, and then he agrees with me that, you know, we should have it, we should do something about it. So I call Hesse, all right? And I'm like, these are KMSTC issues. And so I go to Hesse's place. And then he says, oh, well, I'm sure he also needs our participation because, you know, yes, that's better for him. And so he says, so eventually he agrees that yes, KMST should participate. But he doesn't really write any letter to that effect, you know, so. I come back and then I tell the guys and, you know, we all agree that, okay, yeah, those who can pay will be going. But then a short while later, there's, there are a lot of things that happen on the page, you know, on our WhatsApp platform about, you know, we shouldn't go, you know, KST is not officially participating in the competition. Yeah. And, you know, some of us, like we are debate aficionados, we love the sport, you know, so it was going to win for KNUST or anything. And so myself, Samuel Amwakukusi, Lenin, Berenga, Uforian Ponsa, and Minta, for as we were already on our way to the tournament, when some of the things were being discussed on the page, so we are like, you know what, there's really no way. Some of them have traveled from outside Accra to attend the tournament. So, there's really... so we attend the tournament. During the tournament, a couple of our colleagues, KDS, actually come to visit us at the tournament. So... Wow. <laughs> and then we <laughs> so we get to the final, you know, we get to the final. I mean the final uh, was any other KDS team in the final? No, I think we were the only so we didn't register as KNUST Debate Society. We registered as so it was a joke. Like we were like, so what if you use? And SAC is like yeah, Progressive Debate Society. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we register as the Progressive Debate Society. <laughs> and then, you know, so we compete. And we win the tournament. So the team that wasn't supposed to be there wins the tournament. So Actually won the tournament. Yeah, in jubilation, I think one of us, I mean, not me, but one of us, wrote on the page that, <laughs> We've won or something, enemies go shy, something like that, you know. <laughs> Drama, you know, back and forth. I, I wasn't talking, you know, but back and forth, you know, then they removed us from the pages. So ah, wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh we go back to school during the vacation, and a, a couple of our colleagues are on campus anyway, because obviously now the debate society has strong presence in the SRC. But then I realized that it looks like people have gone to apologize, but I have yeah. done no such thing. You know, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> because you didn't think you were wrong even in the first place. Yeah, I mean, I didn't think I was wrong. So we get to, like, school officially reopens, and at the time, the debate patron, Mr. Ban, uh, calls us for a meeting, all of us. He asks for our sides of the stories. We tell him, everybody tells him. The fights, you know, all those things are said. I'm like, okay. So he said, we'll hear from him. And I'm like, okay, cool, no problem. So um, during school, like, so school has reopened. Nobody has told us anything. Like, we go for debate training normally, you know. Like, you know, we go, we speak. We still win rounds, right? Like, I still go for China, I win rounds and all that. So one day I'm at China and my exam brings me a letter. Like, it's not even in an event. It brings me a letter. I open it and say, you have been suspended indefinitely. So I was suspended, yeah, so I was suspended from the debating that day. And I think... Was there any, 
provocation okay. leading up to that point, or it was just you came and it was cold and then they brought you a letter? Oh, from I, I don't remember any particular provocation. I mean, because when we came to school, of course, people are behaving, you know, funnily, but yeah. when we came to school, you know, it was it was just one of those. And that was the the year in third year, that was the year we were going to run for SRS, right? Mm. Like that was the year we were going to run for SRS. So obviously there were also political cracks. Yeah. yeah. But, but I wasn't the only one who was suspended. Like yeah, those who went for the tournament. Yeah. So you were, were, were no, I was saying that in terms of those who were suspended, was it like part of the group was suspended, a certain part was not suspended? No, no, everybody was suspended. Oh, okay. On paper. Everybody so was what, suspended. Well, how did yours take so long? And how was yours the one making the news? <laughs> I mean, I, in, in the letter, it said you could be called back based on your conduct. <laughs> so I guess I was a bad boy for the longest while. <laughs> so, you know, uh, I was a bad boy for the longest while. But um, so that period, so there was a period in December, like Limpopo, and some of the people who were on suspension were selected to go. Mm. But I wasn't selected to go, so I mean, we're um, still on suspension. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was still on suspension. I mean, you I didn't you think, think it was much. I thought Kenya still put her best foot out there, but yeah. But Kenya's um, best foot was short. Sure. <laughs> I plead the fit. <laughs> so yeah, you did. You you mentioned something. Because I, I by, by the way, just for updates to everyone, I think at Limpopo, um, there was only one break from West Africa, if I'm right. And it was Aurelia and Edupo. Aurelia and Edupo. Yes. Okay, cool. I'll leave that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so I, 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 I mentioned. Personally, you let me just say this. Maybe you can. No, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Personally, I still think I've, I'm possibly suspended from the debate society because I was never given a letter. <laughs> I was never given a letter to return because um, the next tournament, the next tournament was when KST hosted GEDC. I was SRC president then. I helped secure funding for the tournament. I attended a couple of training sessions. I was still not selected to speak. In fact, <laughs> it, I mean, all those stories are funny, but so it means that every tournament you saw me attend for KNUST and any tournament I attended between, you know, after 2013 till 2018 was self-funded. Wow. Wow. And in that time, I won a nationals for Kenya. It was self-funded. Wow. And it still counted to you know, when, when they do. I don't know how many we've won now. They counted. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I did PADC 2015. It was in semi-finals, yes. On Kenya State ticket. It was self-funded. Wow. And so, wow. Wow. yeah, I'm still on suspension. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> so, um, I w you you did you did mention that there were some political innuendos, and it's just to give it a bit of a backdrop. It was within that same period you were running for SRC election, but you were running against uh, different people within the debate society. One of them was your partners for the breakaway tournament. <laughs> And my teammates, like you know, and you guys, my have teammates. Teammates. and your teammates, was how and your teammates, which was learning, all of this coupled with having to be best friends who grew up within the debate society, who have now attended competitions, and now this reflecting on the future of the debate society. How how did this play out between all of you? Because I think there was a lot of rancor about division and factionalization within the debate society, which some people actually say attributed to, quote unquote, uh, whatever happened to the debate society. 
I mean, um, I was probably the least visible during that era in debate, the debate society. I mean, because at the top, I was very much unwelcome. But I had my lovers, and I can assure you. I had my lovers. And it's also interesting that my trainees were the most successful debaters at the time. And so yourself, Telfa, Tintin, in judging Perez, you know, can mind us. Like, it was like, and those, you people suffered a bit for that. It was like, yes, we are not attending meetings anymore as he should, but we can still see all these guys everywhere making noise, you know. And so I'm sure that in some ways, you guys suffered, which probably led you to stay up debate for a while. Maybe when you into interview, you can tell your story. It played, so it, it's had consequences. And I think if you look at things some way, somehow, even down the line, over the years, even today, I see, you know, traits of it, you know, people who haven't moved on from all those times and all those issues. Lenin was my teammate. Um, the vacation we went for the tournament. I also spent time in Lenin's town. You know, the famous Dry Alcantar. I was there with him. Like, I stayed over. His mom cooked for us. You know, we discussed politics. We knew we'd be coming into the next semester to discuss elections. But in that same semester, in that same vacation, that's when Speech Forces was born. So a lot of things are very important to my life happened within that period. But, I mean, we had discussions whether he should contest, whether I should contest, all those things. Eventually, he contested, you know. And so, but after the election, there was something to work with in terms of a relationship, all right? You know, you can have challenges or difficult times doing friendship in all friendships. Every friendship has that period. The key question is, when everything is over, okay, when all that rancor is over, will there be enough friendship to work with? And that's what I had with Lenin, all right? Some of the others, the friendship never, you know, survived to date. I mean, we've had interactions in many ways, but sometimes you just can't fake it. I mean, people did things, things mm -hmm. were done. Probably I would also be accused of doing things, you know, who knows? But those were very turbulent political times in the chaos debate society. And so, yeah. And one of my biggest things was about the fact that I, I thought that it is right for the members to also select their leaders. I mean, whatever be the case, the members should select their leaders. And so all these things are very interesting things that happened as far as all those movements were concerned. Um, I also think I wouldn't have won SRC elections if that hadn't happened, because it put me out on the streets and made me realize that I need to build a new political group that I had put together. And yeah. That's that's. I, I remember one of the flashpoints, and correct me if I'm wrong. One of the flashpoints was that you disagreed the way in which leaders for the Kenya City Debate Society should be chosen. Um, so I, I I remember it was more of like a handover, and there were people who believed that this system should be so, and you you just disagreed with the way that that system should go. First of all, is, is that correct? And in today's debate society, we see elections running, leaders being chosen. Would you say you were proven right after all these years? The sweetness of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all I can say. That's, that's the very good answer. It feels like it can be the headline. Andrews, we can frame this at the bottom uh, as the first time. Okay, let, let's talk about debates for a while. Let's talk about the two PADC. Let's talk about 2015 and let's talk about 2018. 2015, I was out of the debate uh, society by, as crafted by you, reasons, <laughs> uh, by extension of, by uh, what do you call it, 
collateral damage by association. But, <laughs> but we heard of the, the stories of PAUDC 2015, of the things that Tim Kenya was able to do. And then I, I think the, the one that's especially some of the speeches that you were given in the tournament, and also the iconic POI <laughs> by uh, Derek in that semi, and even that semi and the stories which are surrounding it. And especially because everyone thought you guys had made the final, I'll be very honest. And not to say that um, Ellie Flim and JJ did not deserve to make because I, I think they also equally deserve to make it from their end. But how was having to marry that sentiment together with everything which was happening at that moment? And what were some of your greatest stories within that tournament? PLDC 2015, interesting tournament. First of all, congratulations to Ellie Flim and JJ Ataka. I mean, in training, I mean, I have just, I did a training session or two. Even though I was suspended, like in preparation for that PAEDC, I, uh, a friend from Botswana had come down, Onika. So I made her come to KNUST to help her stream. She was second in PAEDC 2013. And so I, you know, handled her logistics to come to Kumase so she could help her stream. And during training, JJ and Ellie were not the like most successful teams in training. But I knew there was a spark. I like I really could see that there was a spark. So like the yes, su success, no surprises in there. No surprises in there. Um I didn't plan to go to the tournament till I saw my exam schedule like two weeks or three weeks before the tournament and realized that. I can write my last paper and still attend the PADC. And remember, I had not debated since um, this PADC 2015. So I had, not, I had not debated since the previous GTDC that I won, which is GTDC 2014, which was mid-year, and PADC was happening December 2015. So that is over 18 months of not debating, right? And because of that, my partner, who though is part of the debating, but it was difficult to fit him in various places. You try him with this person, it really doesn't work, you know, because people are who they are. Mm -hmm. And so going into it was going to be tough. I had to rely on experience and sheer talent, you know, it wasn't training. It wasn't a product of training. It was mere talent, you know, that that I ran through that tournament with. Because, you know, you are you have not learned the latest techniques. You have not seen the speakers that you are competing against. I remember in on a bus, that was the first time faithfulness and I spoke. You know, previously I had seen him shouting loudly in the briefing room, <laughs> you know. So he sits on a bus and he's like, "Bien, like you know, I have heard about you. You scored uh, seventy-eight picks in round <laughs> that's, something of that's that's I'm like, "Oh, cool. You know me. That's nice. All right. I'm not an OG after all." <laughs> so yeah, I I had tough times in the preliminary rounds. You know, mm. I had tough times in the preliminary rounds, but I. I, I was really pushing through and kudos to my teammate learning to like, when we are together on our day, like, you know, we are there, we are there. Unfortunately, I can't remember the round so much like I used to, you know, those days I could go around, talk about the arguments that were made and all that. But, yeah. but I met, you know, I was in rooms with Jamie, was in rooms with Bongani and, you know, like we had great rounds. And so, the Octus, the Octus was like a KNUST affair, and then uh, one UG team, I think. And so um, we had uh, Telfa, you know, yeah, I think Telfa and Co were there. Uh, yeah. Benedict was there with Ida also, and then uh, Aurelia and then Prince. And so we were like our bench to Aurelia, Prince, myself, and then you know, and then. And then 
the quarterfinals. Hey, that was that was a tough one. Prince and Aurelia were in opening. I was in opening also. Then Inzube was in closing, and there. Ah yes. You know, there was also in closing. Faithfulness probably says it's one of the best debates he had watched as at as at that point, because he had been kicked out in the octus, and so octus, yeah. <laughs> It was a heated round, but we went to with Derek. We went to with Derek. Mm -hmm. But the semi-final, first of all, like, I was tired anyway. I was tired for the rounds. I was tired. But I really <laughs> thought that we stood a good chance. Because we had met uh, uh, Oguoki, you know, we had met yeah. in the prelims. And we whipped them. Um, I believed that we could beat Derek's team. And so, at best, mm -hmm. you know, we were going to have a tough battle with Jamie on the same bench. Then the debate starts, and then I realize that Jamie is going off. You know, like he's going off. It's, it's like, you know, I think it was a motion about doing something about climate change, and he spent mm. six minutes of his speech talking about why we must do climate change without talking about the proposed solution. Do you get it? So the, was it the uh, taxes, whether we should ban it? Yeah, then, uh, and it was what he spent talking about a few things in relation to that. Then Ubukri comes in and then bombs the whole room. says, yeah, we should ban it rather than tax it. And everybody is all excited. You know? <laughs> everybody is all excited. But non, I, I probably still don't know how to mention the name of Jamie's partner. non tang kwa non Exactly. You are really becoming good with the name. Yeah. I still think you are proud. I live in a multicultural society. Are, it, it sounds more, it sounds tougher than that. Anyway, Noni, shout out to you. So, Noni does the best repair job ever. Like, best repair job ever. She literally handcuffs Jimmy's case and drags him into the final. You know, but I think there's a chance, you know, I come in, I do my speech, then Derek comes in. When Derek starts speaking, I have a POI. Jimmy, <laughs> so it means we all saw the problem in Derek's case. <laughs> we all saw the problem in Derek's case. Jamie was the one who was called, so he asked the POI and then uh, the rest is history. And so, but after the round, I knew the work we start like stood a very good chance. And I thought that mm -hmm. on the bench we were the better team. But I also knew that sometimes things are rooted in history. PADC 2015 looked so much like Jamie's time. And so even while we were waiting, was no I, I really knew that nah, it would be tough. It would be tough to go through. It would be tough to go through. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's it. I remember again after that period, I was sitting on a, the staircase of the central cafeteria with Julian. I'm like, no, no, I'm done with this thing. It's too stressful. It's too stressful. <laughs> but yeah, a few months later, I was back in it. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way you stay away. Like, the debate is really, really stressful. I think it's, it's one of the things we'll talk about. And I can just imagine you in, in that moment, that, that kind of room, it's just that room that when you also lose, you sort of have some respect for, because you know, like the, there was competition. But I want to fast forward to um, 2018, because 2018, surprise, surprise, when you said your first speaker was a rapper, I was about to say you have a thing for speaking with rappers. But surprise, surprise, I was your partner. But I would attest, I knew nothing about doing PADC, not to talk of winning it, except for the fact that we came for training and you said, we are doing this, let's do this round. The next round, we are doing it again. I'm like, what's going on here? And then before I realized, we are doing PADC. What was the approach from you, especially learning from the other PADCs? Was this something that you had looked at and envisioned and said, look, it's possible that we're able to win it. Because for context, West Africa had not won it ever since it was put into force. And this was heavily dominated by the South and queued the results in 2015 where only one team from West Africa broke. 
what was the strategic alignment? What was the preparation like? And how were you able to execute such, such masterclass? See, I've spoken to a lot of people. I've, 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 I've spoken to a lot of people, like amazing speakers. But nothing worked as perfectly as the way you and I worked. Mm, that's true. When you decided to do it. And this is after you had, bef like, you had been saying, dear and I, let's speak for a long time. I'm like, yeah. now you're like ready. Like two years. <laughs> yes. I'm like, no, you're not ready. Even for an open time, no. And I had been, I had also come to realize that I put in more when I'm not speaking with my mates, all right? And so it's easier, it was easier for me to pick a rookie from somewhere and do amazing things with that person, you know? Like, I could have done the first genesis with an experienced speaker and probably crashed out in uh, quarterfinals or probably not breaking top four. But I did it with Plato. <laughs> do you get it? I did it with Plato. Now, when you left the debate and you came back, I mean, I recommended you to Prince for the first ELSJ, the year, you won the second one and all that. So you became, you know, a rounded speaker, but you became a complimentary second speaker for me in ways that I didn't have with a lot of other speakers. Because um, I think I didn't evolve, evolve into a second speaker so well, especially in closing. Like I was, um, you know, boom, 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 first speaker. And then uh, when I spoke with you, I adopted the strategy of doing second speeches in opening the year two because then i could let you put out what everybody expects then now we can push ourselves to do extra stuff you know so PADC 2018 my major reason for going and motivation was to bring like the tournament back to KNUSC, which we are obviously going to host but to make sure that you know, like we host it in grand style. I knew we were going to enjoy the rounds. I didn't know that we were going to win. Wow. But this I is the first time I'm hearing that. Yes. I mean, I never thought of losing it. Mm. But I never thought of winning it too. All right? But, and I probably wasn't too ecstatic till the first round <laughs> when we met... <laughs> The, 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 the wonderful ladies. <laughs> and then I realized that, no, this thing is personal. <laughs> this thing is personal. So, you know, like it was a heated round, very heated. And then we won. Then we won the next one. Then we won the next one. I think we won our first um, three. Yes, we won our first three. No, I think on the last day... So we were last, last round, we were second. Yes, we were second. Yes, we were second. So, one. yeah, I mean, yeah. We met the two ones. Yeah. And then um, next day, we won, we won. And then finally, they beat us in round six. Yeah, the lights out. Uh, round. Yes, yes. So, but at that point, I felt that we, we would win. Like, at that point, I felt we would win. Tournament. Yes, definitely. Because you were also in your zone, you know, mm -hmm. you're also in your zone. What I had, I knew we would struggle with was you believing that you deserve to be there. Mm. Yeah. So there were people who had conversations with you and they had those conversations with you because I had told them to speak to you. Mm. you know, they were encouraging. Probably you didn't know, but it's because I had said, you know what? Yeah. Tell him that that tell him that so that you don't feel that you are undeserving of your place you needed to know that you deserved to be there and you are going to be great at it because that was how we would win if you believed do you get it and so i, I remember one of my exciting debates was the round seven uh, uh, it was emotion about jamal kashogi ah uh, yes and, that was 
Yeah. 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 We have been fourth in the previous round. Or we were third, I don't know. When, when the ladies beat us, I don't know what. Yeah, we were. we were fourth. Okay, yeah. So, Jamal Khashoggi. And, you know, it's emotional about Jamal Khashoggi and then Percy and uh, who, Andrews, right? Yeah, Andrews. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> And then uh, Anam and Aslahan were in uh, OG. And then I think... The uh, no, it wasn't the boys. It was... Uh, oh, this What's lady from Zimbabwe. No, no, it wasn't Dini. It was this lady from Zimbabwe. Mini. Okay, yeah. I, no, 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 no. That's, that's someone else. No. I, I, I have a in our I check it. Was, we were still right, and our opening was yes. and yes. yeah, and then o, OG was Anam and um, Atlang. Atlang. The CG was when was it that Dino or the boys? It was, it was one no, of the like, really probably, yeah, yeah so anyway, yeah, yeah, she was public, best public speaker in uh, PABC 2015. No, no, second or third, no, because Jamie was the best. So, um, and Percy and Andrews, we had had this motion in trade, and yeah. these boys. guys run all the arguments that I had run in training, run what they now have to add. I'm like, wow, these guys were, are really out. They were actually winning. They were actually winning, even within CG. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm like, hmm, I have to try something. I have to try something. So I, I'm not going to talk about arguments in this on this podcast anyway. The next time you hear it flying around. <laughs> but I remember that I pulled a rabbit out of a hat, you know, with the case that I, I presented them. I, I, I knew that they were like, I had messed them up because they weren't expecting it. But yeah, I had to I, do something. <laughs> What the argument you want to say? No, no, no. But it's the Shaft podcast. It's the Shaft podcast. <laughs> yeah, it's the Shaft podcast. Andrew says the rabbit should have died in the heart. <laughs> yeah, so, so, I mean, that was one of my exciting rounds. And then the semi final, too, was a very exciting round for me. It was about whether African Union should negotiate or whether individual states should negotiate in terms of the uh, Belt Road Initiative. That's one to pull the rabbit out of the house. Like, those are the exciting moments when you pull out an argument that you know that, yes, like, of course, you can win debates with other arguments, but there are some arguments that you win with and you love it so much, you know. And that was, it was one of those rounds also. And so, once we made the semi-final, the final, I knew... The, the only thing I was probably struggling with was, you know, panel, regional issues and all that. Mm. But after OG's speech, I, I, I knew that we just had to pull through. We just had to pull through. And it was a very humbling moment for me, you know, winning pants. Because when first time, uh, when we beat University of Ghana, no, no, in fact, not when we beat University of Ghana. When Julian saw me speak, at uh, the inter-hall debate competition in first year. He went to Duke and said, I see that boy winning that trophy in Calabar. Wow. So it was a five-year journey to winning the debate trophy of the tournament. And I mean, if, if anybody had to do it for the first time for West Africa, I wish others had done it before. But I'm glad it was me. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and I picked up the best coming down to me. And so, yeah, after that, after that, every other thing I did in debates, I was just tired. When I attended <laughs> work, I was tired. Like, ever, ever since then, I've been a tired man in debate. Because, yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. wish that. When, when, when I look at my, so I was telling you earlier, I think in our, informal conversation before the interview mm. started. So, it's like missing 2014 and a good part of 2015 as a debater, especially at the, in that period of growth, 
is like LeBron not going to a Michael Jordan camp, basketball, summer camp, all right? Mm-hmm. Or it's like Kobe not going to a Michael Jordan summer camp. Or it's like Joel Embiid not being seen at the age he was seen. Or like Yusuf Nekic's father not beating up policemen. You know, so Yusuf Nekic is a basketball player. He's one of my favorite mm-hmm. basketball players. And his father is a policeman. And uh, he beats up some criminals and arrests them single-handedly, about six people. So an NBA scout is reading a Serbian newspaper and is like, hmm, if this guy is that big, he must have sons. So he flies to Serbia, goes to look for the police officer because he was being rewarded in the newspaper. He goes to see the police officer, looks at his sons, and the one within the right age range to be able to be trained into a basketball player was naked. Today is in the NBA. So wow. there are moments that if you miss, it's very difficult to, you know, get to a certain place. And I feel like if I had had 2014, I would have gone to Wells earlier and I would have done amazing things at Wells in subsequent ones. Do you get it? So when you ask me about my career, probably that's the only part of it that I think if I had had, I would have done better. But I enjoyed peace. But there's another funny thing. In relation to your podcast, I have another funny debate story. <laughs> yeah, that's what you want. It's probably one of the funniest shafts, you know, in history. So, sorry, Len, not to tell this story. So, we, I'm not going to be too specific, by the way. So we go for PADC 2013 and we go to the top league for the first time. David and Jim is in OO, Lenin and I are in OG. And, uh, Yash and Dan are in CG. Mm-hmm. And Nikki and Zulu are in CO. So before the round, we have the most. Then I ask Lenin the meaning of a certain word, which is technical, like it's legal. So I'm like, yeah, lawyer, what's the meaning of it? He tells me. <laughs> so I, I go and run it, you know. Yeah. Then, oh, comes leader of this guy. Say, no, 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 that's the one. <laughs> you know? So, then it goes, and he's trying to fix the case, because now he realize that, hmm, these guys are probably, he's trying to fix the case. And so he ends up knifing me, right? <laughs> then he just comes, no, sorry, Dan comes, and Dan wants to be loyal to the bench. So Dan shafts uh, the bench, but he agrees with me, all right? Dan shafts the bench, but he agrees with me, not with Lenin, okay? And then Yash comes, and then, you know, he just throws the whole bench away, including his rib. <laughs> <laughs> including his rib. And so... Nikki's entire whip speeches. Panel, the entire bench have shafted and knifed each other to the point we don't even know what the case is. You know, it was a very funny round. It's so funny that after the round, I apologize to Yash. You know, that, yeah, I'm sorry we did this to you. So they were third <laughs> and fourth. Ah. <laughs> oh, thankfully, it was the prelim. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was a preliminary round. It was a preliminary round. And so, yeah, I mean, those are some of the. Funny times, but mm-hmm. PADC, I always came back from PADC very fulfilled. And mm-hmm. that is why I'm happy about what we did with Akofina because we gave people a truly African, like uh, ex- a true African experience. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I just wish, I, I never want to see PADC die. Recently, I've seen some issues, but I never want to see PADC die because some yeah. of the people, it's like amazing people. Amazing people. And when we talk about bringing Africa together, it's at these levels, you know. Mm-hmm. What would have happened if it Nyerere earlier in his life? It would be easier to achieve their goals. And that's how PA is if you Yeah. We, we want to we want to talk about because we want to talk about uh, Latif and Togo because we had comprehensive discussions on this platform about um the PADC in Togo and you you've been around for a while, so we'd definitely like to hear your opinion. But let's let's talk about Akofina, which of which you were the convener. And since then, we've never seen as much institutional support for 
debates as we saw within our covenant. Mm -hmm. And when Nutifafa, which happened in Togo, ended, what everyone kept on saying was that we might never have an Akofina again. I want you to link this to your time within the SRC where you were coalescing support for the debate society and your, the relationship you've had with the administrations of, um, of the schools, of the boards, and how important is it that we get it right and how big of a role did it play in Akofina moving forward? Thank you.